Welcome to All Steelers Talk, your home for everything Pittsburgh Steelers, presented by AllSteelers.com. Hello and welcome. I want to say lovely people, but I think today we're all just a little gray. To another episode of All Steelers Talk. It is Friday. Friday's with Derek the Kid. Derek, it it um it's been a rough week for the Pittsburgh Steelers, and everything just seemed to get dramatically worse on Friday. How uh how you feeling? How you holding up there, my friend? Man, it just seems like this team can't catch a break when it comes to being healthy, whether it's you know, injuries, whether it's you know, COVID, the flu, sickness, illnesses, whatever. It seems like they can't really get healthy, which is um Frustrating because they're not playing very well right now, so they need all hands on deck. Yeah, yeah, it's a bad time for literally everybody to uh, have something wrong. For those that don't know what's going on, the Pittsburgh Steelers started the week with uh, T.J. Watt, Robert Spillane, and Joe Haig ending up on the COVID-19 list, all tested positive, and then finished the week ruling out Joe Hayden, who they were hopeful to have a return this week. They also um, ruled out who was – their other player that is out, it's Joe Hayden and someone else. We'll get back to that one. And are now fearful that both Cam Hayward and Isaiah Loudermilk will not play against the Ravens for a non-COVID-related illness. Um, from what I heard, when I first got the text talking about Cam Hayward's sick, things aren't looking good, it, it sounded like a COVID case. Then it was, nope, Cam tested negative. Okay, a positive sign. And then all the news broke of Cam's not really looking good to play. That's um, that's already scary for a defensive line that doesn't have T.J. Watt that is going to rely heavily on Taco Charlton and Derek Tushka. They don't have Stefan Tuitt. Obviously, we've talked about that all season. Chris Wormley has done a good job, but he's no Stefan Tuitt. They don't have Tyson Alulu. It's Henry Mondu. Oh, Isaiah Bugs. Isaiah Bugs is the other one that's out. I knew there was another guy. Um, they don't have Isaiah Bugs, who did not play last week. And now it could come down to three day Steeler. He's been around for about 72 hours. Mark Travis Adams starting at defensive tackle. I mean, before we dive into w- what the possibilities are, what are your concerns about a defensive line that has that lineup? going on heading into the Baltimore Ravens week yeah I mean obviously this is one of the worst weeks that you can have this type of problem because Baltimore is going to run the ball that's what they want to do that's what the Steelers have struggled to do even when they've been healthy I mean last week they were you know relatively healthy up front or about as healthy as they're going to be the rest of the way and they still couldn't stop um, Joe Mixon to the tune of you know 200 rushing yards for the Bengals and a blowout loss so um yeah, it's definitely concerning. I mean, hopefully Cam can go. I mean, if he he's really been their anchor um, on that defensive line with so many moving parts around him. So if he can't go, that's going to be um, very, very problematic. I mean, we saw them bench Isaiah Bugs last week. Um, they moved Cam around. He played a little bit of nose, um, which I thought was kind of interest, an interesting decision by Tomlin. That decision really didn't work. I thought that Hayward and Watt both played their worst game of the season last week. Mm-hmm. Um, the tape wasn't good. I mean, that it was just very uncharacteristic. Watt doesn't look, didn't look 100% healthy anyway. No, I thought Watt was a step slow, and I thought Hayward looked real out of place at nose. Yeah, like he couldn't. I, mean, I, I felt like he was too in the middle, whereas he couldn't, he couldn't make a play. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. he was too swallowed up. Yeah, they had. To, I mean, the, the thing is, the Steelers have had. I mean, it's a personnel thing, and they've also had trouble getting lined up. Like that was one of the reasons that I think Bugs was bitch because just not lining up correctly and struggling to get ready before the snap. And then oftentimes just out of the, like in the wrong gap. So um, they're going to have to be much more disciplined in terms, regardless of if it's Adams, you know, I do expect him to play in base. I mean, he's listed as their, um, as their starter, or is it Mondu? Mondu Mondu as the, at the nose Adams is listed as the backup defensive end right now. But if Loudermilk and Hayward can't go, he's starting right, he's to get time. Yeah, I mean, it seems like he could potentially at least get a helmet this week, which is, you know, kind of crazy for a guy that was just signed off the street. But um, who knows? I mean, they they obviously know, I mean, what the Baltimore Ravens offense is about under Greg Roman. They want to run the football. So um, it's going to be like last week. If you don't stop it, they're just going to continue to run it down your throat. Um, so it's put up, or like, like, like Mike Tomlin said earlier this week, it's put up or shut up time. 
It is put up or shut up time. And it's an interesting question because it's the Baltimore Ravens. We all know if you don't stop the run against the Baltimore Ravens, you're going to lose. If Adams has to play significant snaps, what does that do to the defense? Can you look at it and say, okay, we have to trim the defense down, at least the defensive line scheme, because Adams doesn't know the playbook. He's been here three days. Or do you say, this is the Baltimore Ravens. You can't, you can't shrink the playbook for one guy. He's got to do what he can do and hope that that hole is not significant enough. Yeah, I mean, I think for the Steelers' perspective, I think if, if you're going to bring in a guy off three days you know, notice. I think you'd want it on the defensive line. You know, you don't, you wouldn't want like a corner, not that the Steelers run just like an incredibly complex defense because they don't, they kind of like what they like um, and don't do a ton of just crazy complex stuff. Now their blitzes will sometimes get a little bit um, crazy, but they haven't even really been blitzing a ton this year. So Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I don't know that it's going to, I don't know how it's going to play out. Um, Injuries could be a factor, you know, if somebody goes down or if Hayward, you know, isn't able to play his normal like 85 percent of snaps, which is crazy for a defensive lineman. Um, and you have to see more of Adams. But like we talked about before the show, like if, if they don't stop the run, um, we won't even have the chance to see the Steelers like nickel and dime defenses because they'll be ahead of the chains. Those like Baltimore has no problem. Like if they want to stay in their base personnel. Um, and get big up front, they'll do that. They'll continue to run the ball until you stop it. So um, they're going to at least need to come out and show some fight to see if, to like just get Baltimore a little more out of their element um, and spread them out. The issue, we talked a little bit about this before we jumped on here. The issue with the Steelers, obviously on defense is they can't tackle anybody for the life of them. That's been the issue all season long. They've tried to clean it up it's happened from time to time but nothing significant I don't think um and then you dropped a Lamar Jackson stat that pretty much told me that the Steelers are in bigger trouble than maybe we imagined Um, yeah I mean I mean Lamar obviously he needs no introduction from me no I don't don't say but yeah I mean it's Lamar he's just incredibly elusive I mean we know that we've seen him I think the Steelers have done a decent job bottling him up in their previous matchups those are different defenses than what I was going to say. Right. <laughs> Those defense have, defenses have TJ Watt, Cam Hayward, Stephon Tewitt, Stephon Tewitt Tyson Alulu, and not Montrevis Adams and Henry Mondo. Yeah, it looks it looks different. But I mean, you know, Lamar is still that same guy, man. I mean, he's he's willing to play from the pocket, but you know, when he gets out on the edge and you know, as a ball carrier, he's incredibly elusive. And I was just looking at some numbers. Um on sis earlier today and like he's forced 28 missed tackles which is 13 higher than any other player in the nfl um now that's not broken tackles that's just like a a defender is in position to tackle him and he makes them miss um and like we talked about too um it's different like having a four six running back you know when they miss the tackle you know you're looking at an explosive play 15 20 yards down the field but lamar legit legitimately has four three speed so you miss the tackle in the secondary the Steelers have not been good tacklers in the secondary. Terrell Evans missed three tackles um, in the first half last week. James Pierre missed a big tackle on a bounce back run that Joe Mixon took for 20 something yards. We've seen Micah Fitzpatrick struggle um, as a tackler in the run game. So you missed a tackle in the secondary on Lamar. Don't be surprised when he ends up, you know, 60 yards down the field in the end zone. That's the, the big thing there is it's not a broken tackle. It's a missed tackle, like you just said, which means Lamar's not getting hit. Like, it's not like right. he's, like, spinning off and, like, slowing down. It's like he just made – nobody touched him. He's got all his momentum still, and he's carrying it forward. That's the dangerous part about Lamar. And you're right. When it comes to the secondary, the Steelers have relied very heavily in past matchups with Lamar on that front five getting to – Lamar or their their middle linebackers I get that even last year it's not like Roberts Blaine and Vince Williams were, were putting much effort in there against a guy as quick as Lamar this year Devin and Joe probably even more alarming somehow but but you're right it is I mean it's terrifying if you're the, the Pittsburgh Steelers it just lo- doesn't look like it could happen we have to hope that it does I think that's the, like it's not even anything to talk about you can't sit here and be like well what could Henry Mondu better Mondu do better to figure this out? It's like nothing. He has to go out there and play. That's the only way that you beat Lamar Jackson. On the back end, when you did talk about the secondary, there could be change. Everybody, it's no secret that James Pierre played pretty bad 
against the Bengals. We all watched. Akella Witherspoon's on the on the bench. Justin Lane is on the bench. Two options that the Steelers could use to replace Joe Hayden this week. Do you expect a change? And if you do expect a change, who do you see out there more if Pierre is not the starter? I mean, we'll, we'll just kind of have to see. Tomlin did finally talk about in the postgame presser that he'd be open to, you know, making some moves just off a blowout loss, you know, against a division rival in Cincinnati. So can I can know. I interrupt you real quick on that? So he said that, and all week long I was like, I was like, okay, things are happening. I thought this was the banner week, maybe. Like things were happening. And all week long I'm watching. And um so far, I can tell you that the only change that has been made, um, at least that I'm able to report, is uh that Henry Mondu is now the starting nose tackle. So um just somebody's yeah. aware those big changes. I think um we'll have to see if they if they do move off of Pierre. I mean, we mentioned how much he struggled last week. Uh five catches, 89 yards, and a touchdown is what I kind of charted him at when I was going through the game. You know, that's that's bad numbers for a boundary corner. I mean, I know the Cincinnati receivers are extremely talented. They got one of the best rooms in the league. But, um, you know, the big and the big play being the touchdown, man, uh, just not getting chest to chest with T. Higgins, a guy that really likes to play above the rim. I mean, you knew that they were going to take some shots. And Pierre struggled against, you know, preventing big plays. So they they took a shot at him and he's in good position, but he loses track of the football in the air. Um, and Higgins just makes a play for the quarterback. So those type of plays are normally, you know, if a corner gets benched, it's usually because, you know, inconsistency and um, allowing those explosive plays down the field. Now, speaking of inconsistent, I mean, unfortunately, that's kind of been the name of uh, Akilah Witherspoon's career. I mean, he's just a very high variance type of player. Um We've talked about that on here, just dating back to his San Francisco days. I mean, there's days where he looks like, you know, a borderline cornerback one, and then there's days where he looks like a practice squad guy that you can't depend on. So I haven't seen anything. I mean, Witherspoon did get some playing time last week. I haven't seen anything that tells me, like, they got to make a switch. But, you know, I mean, at, when you get blown out against a division rival, I mean, sometimes, you know, you got to make change. I don't want to say it's for the sake of change, but just to switch things up and see how it goes. I think that – Justin Lane, I think they've lost all hope in him as a defensive player. I think he's a pretty, pretty solid and a beneficial gunner um, and special teams player, but I think they've just lost faith in him, his ability to play corner um, at, after last season. Yeah, I, I didn't expect Justin Lane to be an option. He does play good special teams, which I think is kind of like under the radar. A lot of NFL guys can make a career our special teams, Jared especially Clark. secondary. I mean, Jordan Dangerfield did it for a long time. Yep. Miles K- Kilber is making a name for it now. Justin Lane can be that guy. You can, I don't you think can, that... even, look at, you can even look at guys like uh, Darius Hayward Bay, who everybody thought was a bust. Oh, yeah. He really wasn't a very good receiver, and then he came to Pittsburgh, and he went to Indianapolis, um, played some special teams there, and then came here and really, like, revived his career. I mean, he ended up sticking the league, I think, almost a decade. Just And really, that wasn't off of his receiving ability. It was just off of his ability to, you know, track and cover down punts and kicks. Yeah, what did he spend? He spent five five years in Pittsburgh just basically blocking on the outside for, like, screen passes and playing special teams. And <laughs> yeah. it was a good career. Like, Darius Hayward Bay was a name that a lot of people knew. So I, I agree with that. Justin Lane could definitely be that guy. I don't know if that's in Pittsburgh, but he could be that guy. Akella Witherspoon, we like we have talked about before. He's the definition of inconsistency. And when he first joined the team and I reached out to San Francisco people and tried to talk to them, that's all they told me is that he is one week he'll look like a starting cornerback. The next week he'll look like he doesn't belong in the league. And I think that's to a degree what James Pierre has done this season. It's not that I don't think he's ever looked like a starting cornerback. But he's looked at times that he could fill in well for Joe Hayden or Cam Sutton or whoever. Let, let me ask this. Marquise Brown, they, they have those wide receivers. They're obviously banged up. The Steelers don't shadow anybody. Mm-hmm. Is that a huge – I mean, if Marquise Brown's really the only receiving name, I believe, that you have to, like, seriously worry about in the Baltimore offense. I, and that's, like, receiver. not That doesn't include Mark Andrews. Yeah. Um, is that – Whoever's on the other side, I mean, he usually plays that right side, correct? And, like, that just basically removes Cam Sutton, who is the guy that you'd want in that situation. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I mean, the Steelers just don't have – they don't have a lot of speed at at corner. Um, That's just been a theme over the last couple years. So, you know, Brown, he's he's a speedster. He can fly and get up and down the field. He's having a pretty good season. Baltimore did just finally get back their first-round pick, Rashad Bateman, who I love coming out of Minnesota – 
Um, oh, I wouldn't necessarily God. say that he's a, necessarily a deep threat type of guy. He's more like that route runner uh, mold. Um, but he's incredibly talented. I'm excited to see how like he plays. I, I was upset that he ended up in Baltimore, but um, yeah, I mean, it, it's, they're going to take their shots. I mean, Lamar will throw the ball down the field. Um, Andrews is kind of their kind of his guy in those go-to kind of moments in the red zone and when, when they kind of need a play. Um, but him and Hollywood have um, connected on several big plays this year. This is kind of a breakout year for him. So just given the Steelers' inability to, you know, keep the keep a lid on things in the back end, this is going to be, you know, this they're going to need Minka to play extremely well. He came up with an interception on a deep ball last week, um, where he kind of came from center field over to make a play on the ball. Unfortunately, the Steelers turned it over right after that. But um, overall, I mean, it, it's going to be interesting to see how how many chances Baltimore really takes because they, like we said, they might not need to just because the Steelers can't stop the run right now. Um, yeah. And you know, the Ravens, they're going to do everything they can, I think, to um, exploit that, I, I would assume. Yeah, I, I'd expect a very strong running game. I want to ask this, too, though. Does it make sense in these situations where Marquise Brown's a guy that primarily plays on the right side? He's clearly the guy that you got to slow down. I get Rashad Bateman, but that's more of a slot receiver. That's still like it's Cam Sutton's job at times, but definitely not in this type of situation without Joe Hayden. Does it make sense? I know they're not going to do it. But should they like should it be a situation where you're looking at this and saying, OK, well, Sutton should probably move over to the right side and play Joe Hayden's spot for this game. I mean, he's smart. He clearly knows the position, knows every position in that defense. Yeah. Does it, yeah. But they won't do it. Is that yeah, I mean, one move? I think Sutton's incredibly smart. I, I think that's kind of what drew them to him coming out of the draft years ago. Um, he's kind of I mean, he's done everything for him. He's been their slot guy. He's been their dime backer. He's been, you know, outside corner. He. Yeah, he, yeah, they haven't done it a ton this year, but I mean, you've we've seen him in years past just on tape. He'll rotate back and play like the deep half or even the deep middle uh, in cover three, cover two. Um, he does a lot of different things for him. As far as like what I have in Shadow Brown, um, no, not, not even Shadow, but just move to the right side where you know yeah. that, that, they that could, Brown's I mean, going to primarily play. Yeah, I mean, they could do that. Um, I, I think, I, and this is kind of just off topic. We'll talk about this a lot in the off season, but. I think this is one of those reasons why I really think the Steelers need to try to invest in a corner, Uh, whether it be in free agency and you go out and get a number one guy. I'm not saying you go pay a guy like J.C. Jackson, Jalen Ramsey money, even though I'd love to have him in Pittsburgh. But, you know, this is why I've been banging the drum for a corner in round one. Like you look at the receivers in this division, you got to have somebody like, you know, to shut these guys down. I mean, you're in a division now where you're, you know, you've got, you know, not just Jarvis Landry, Donovan Peoples-Jones, but, you know, the Bengals have three incredibly talented receivers, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd, Jamar Chase. Jamar Chase is going to be a problem for the next decade. We knew that as soon as he was drafted. And then even Baltimore, they, they took Bateman. Brown's now having kind of a breakout year. So the Steelers don't have a number one corner that you can kind of assign. Like the, the Ravens kind of treat Marlon Humphrey like that. They move him wherever they need him that week. You know, if a team has, you know, a dominant slot receiver, they'll move – Humphrey inside and have him shadow that guy. They have a dominant outside receiver, say a Jamar Chase, they'll move him outside. Whatever they need, he can do. And that's kind of what, like, I wish the Steelers defense has because it allows you, like, more flexibility in these types of games where you're like, all right, who do I need to shut down? Does that does that happen? Could that be a Sutton type situation? Because that would be the guy that I'd pick, I guess, would be to move. Out of I think Sutton works best in the move. Out, out of their guys that they have available and on actually just on the roster period, I think he's their best oh, yeah. guy. Um, yeah, and on the roster period, but imagine next season. Like, say they do invest, say they do get another cornerback in there, they got to get a slot guy. There's zero chance Pittsburgh Steelers go this offseason without bringing in somebody to play the slot, yeah, or at least be another or option just, in the or slot, or just move Cam back inside full time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, but I, I think, you know, for me, that's one of my number one wish lists for next season, um, along with offensive line, just getting a corner. Um, it's a speed thing. Like, I want somebody that's athletic enough to run with these guys so that you can play more man coverage. Like, you look at you look at a lot of the best defenses around the league, just to, particularly in the last, like, five years. I mean, the best defensive schemes, in my opinion, are either, like, your primary man schemes or your man match schemes. The Steelers don't do a lot of man match no quarters or anything like that. That's never been Tomlin's MO. Um, But you look at like, you know, defenses like the Patriots 
they can do things differently. They can play cover zero, cover one, man to man, press coverage across the board because they have the corners to do it. Pittsburgh can't do that because they don't have the personnel. And I know like no team's perfect. And, but that's just, if I was building this defense back up for next year, that would be something I'd want to invest in. Like, let me go get a corner that I can feel comfortable with leaving on an Island. Um, a la what they were able to do with Ike Taylor back in the, back in the day. Um, to shut down opposing teams like best player. Yeah, yeah. And to, to just touch on your no team's perfect thing, no team is perfect, but the Pittsburgh Steelers, Far from their imperfection should be no Stefan Tuitt and Tyson Alulu or Devin Bush and Joe Schobert. It shouldn't be everything outside of TJ Watt, Mika Fitzpatrick, Terrell Edmonds this season, and uh, Cam Hayward. That should not, that should not be perfect. That's, that's a lot of imperfections. Um, I do agree, though. I think that I haven't really dug into the draft a lot, but I do like – the cornerback, you've mentioned that a couple of times. I've heard it from a couple of people. I've heard it from Donnie. Shout out Donnie, by the way. Dude's in in Vegas right now. Arizona State is trash. Trash. Not a good football team whatsoever. And this kid's just like, yeah, I'm going to go to the Pac-12 championship in Vegas. I'm going to go spend a couple of days there. So Big money. good for him. We're sitting home yeah, doing nothing. You're about to go work 14 hours at 8 o'clock at night. Donnie's in Vegas. We're at the rodeo. There's a national rodeo convention going on. I'm about to go eat pizza from yesterday. <laughs> Two different lives. Um, all right. So before we get into predictions here real quick, I just got to ask general question. And you could touch on this however you like. Can the Pittsburgh Steelers stop the Baltimore Ravens offense? Because I don't even want – we haven't talk, talked about the Ravens defense, Steelers offense. I don't even think it needs to be a discussion really because it's going to come down to whether or not the Pittsburgh Steelers could stop the Ravens. Can, can they do it? Is it possible? with as many guys as they have. And if if they can't do it, can the offense do enough to keep this game comfortable or competitive? Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't see them stopping Baltimore. I mean, they might be able to keep it, you know. I mean, t- we've all kind of talked about it uh, too much, in my opinion, in the last couple of weeks. It's really just coming down to a pride thing for this defense. They haven't stopped a soul. They're getting absolutely gashed. Um, it's put up or shut up time. Like Mike Tomlin said, I'll repeat that again. You know, we, we talked all last week about, oh, they needed a rebound. This is the division game, big time game. And they came out flat and they got their buzz handed to them. So, yes, um, to me, it's just one of those things. We'll see what the defense has, but I'm not anticipating that they shut them down necessarily. Now, if they can at least keep it in the twenties, um, as far as points allowed, I mean, I think you probably just say that that's a win. Um, you know, hold them to 24, 27. <laughs> but I think the Steelers' offense can score that many points. I don't know. The Ravens, I mean, you know, they blitz more than any team in the NFL. Um, they can, they have the ability. You know, they've got a lot of corners. They've got like five cornerbacks on the injury report. I don't know who's going to play. I think Humphrey plays. They have 11 guys that are questionable. Yeah, Humphrey I hasn't play, practiced the last two days with, this, with yeah. an illness. I mean, I get it's only an illness, but sometimes yeah. those things linger. I would bet that he plays, but if he doesn't, that's really good because I think that changes uh, a lot. Yeah, Deontay Johnson talked a little bit uh, this week about asking. I know he was asked about if he thinks he's going to be shadowed by Marlon. I hope he is because I think that would be that's love for me as like a film guy. So that's um, what. Yeah, I, yeah. He I, said I, the same thing. He was like, "Dude, he's like, if they follow me, that's, that's a sign of respect. If respect. they don't, I see what they that just says what they want to say." And I'm yeah. like, "That's awesome." And that's that's another thing too. Like last year, like when you watch the games from the Steelers, like the Ravens' corners, like real and the Steelers receivers, especially last year, very young. Like Deontay Johnson's second year, Chase Claypool is a rookie. There's yeah. a, um, the Ravens' secondary really dominated that matchup. But this time around, there's no Marcus Peters. Uh, Jimmy Smith's been, you know, Jimmy Smith, who's hardly ever healthy, but when he is, he's really good. So um, Baltimore right now. Yeah, I mean, Baltimore is going to be up in their face. They're going to press and take their chances with their guys on the outside. Steelers receivers are going to have some chances. Um, you know, I thought Johnson played a good game last week. Claypool made a couple plays, although he was, you know, up and down like Chase always seems to be. Um, I don't know. I don't think the Steelers are going to be able to run the ball on them. I, just because I've lost faith, regardless of the matchup of the Steelers being able to run the football. I mean, it's one of the worst rushing units in the league. Um, so I don't know. I mean, I'm. we'll get into predictions, but yeah. I was going to say, so this is – also we'll one, more, this one. one more thing. Um, Baltimore might have one of the best – like what we thought that we were getting into with Ingram, Watt, and Hosmith. Yeah. Baltimore has that, like legitimately. Um, Owe um, from Penn State, another yeah. one of their first-round picks. 
been great, uh, forcing a lot of pressure off the edge. They got Justin Houston. Houston decided to sign with Baltimore instead of Pittsburgh in the offseason, um, which forced them to kind of go after Melvin Ingram. No, and then Ingram. another guy that's really popped on tape for me when I've been watching is Tyus Bowser. He's kind of he, – they, they move him around a little bit. He plays him inside. They plays off the edge. Um, but as a pass rusher this year, like his pressure rate's like 16%, which is like right around where TJ Watts is. He just hasn't been able to get home, and they they don't rush him as much. But when he does, I mean, he forced a fumble on Justin Fields a couple weeks ago. Um, he's very disruptive, and they're they're fast. I mean, they're linebackers. Oh, those, yeah. Owe freak out. I was gonna say Owe ran a what a four three four four. Yeah, Patrick Queen freak. So they got yeah. they got guys that like can really move um, up front. So. We'll see. It's gonna be a challenge. I'm, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a tough game, I think, for like Dan Moore. Uh, Chooks is playing better, which that's a good thing. Uh, yeah, I don't think that is a good thing, though. I think if the Pittsburgh Steelers' offensive line was gonna get better, Dan Moore should be getting better. Chooks should not, so that they could just put Zach Banner in there because you're not gonna replace Dan Moore at this point. You're just like, well, Dan Moore, like we're not gonna pull him. Like he, you want him to play better, or you want him to get those reps because next year he's the full time starter again. Chooks is gone. Chooks is not here next season. Yeah. So, uh, one cool. thing, one thing too, um, Villanueva, of course, pre- his, our last left tackle, uh, both yeah. him and Dan Moore have nearly identical uh, numbers as far as like in the past game, uh, pass blocking protection yeah. issues. So um, that could be good news for Alex Highsmith, who will be lining up over there pretty much the entire game. So I would, that, that is one thing. I wouldn't be surprised if Alex had a really good game on Sunday. That was kind of one of my bold predictions was that he gets like two sacks. Two sacks. If if Alex Highsmith gets two sacks against Al Villanueva, at least like at least we can look at that. Like Steelers Twitter will have enough of a good time with that. That like if they do lose, oh, yeah. it is a bad loss. Like you know, It'll small be victories, silver lining. Yeah, 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 silver lining. Little little victories, little wins here and there. All right, I'm kind of nervous to ask you this, so we're getting into predictions here. The Pittsburgh Steelers, four and a half point dogs at home. Against the Baltimore Ravens, over under is 44. I personally think that the four and a half point spread is a safe bet right now because I think that if Cam Hayward gets ruled out tomorrow afternoon or Saturday afternoon at some point, that's definitely going to go up. Like that, that'll be a six and a half point spread at that point. Um, but four and a half, not terrible, very winnable game. That's a that's a game where you know you could see Vegas. They don't know what's going to happen. They're hoping that you take it just so that the Steelers lose by a field goal. That's what they're looking for. Four and a half point spread, 44 over under. What are you feeling here? I hate to say this because I really do. And it it hurts me. It really does hurt me. Well, if there's good news here, you did. We all did, actually. We We all missed last week. That's what I'm saying. So maybe, you know, maybe we're just really bad at this. I'm taking Baltimore, unfortunately. I, I hate saying that, and it pains me because this could be, you know, Ben's last game against Baltimore probably at home. Um, yeah. Still got the road matchup and the finale if he's healthy by then. Um, but, yeah, I just – just the matchups. I, I know Baltimore um, is has squeaked by a ton of games this year. They're not blowing anybody out, which I think is another reason why that that spread is so thin. Um but the Steelers, man, they're not really key. They're not stopping anybody. And like I, the the thing that we thought this year would come down to is like that we thought that they were going to have like a really good to great defense. And this is a, this is a really bad defense right now. I mean, you look at almost every advanced metric. I mean, the Steelers are in the bottom six or seven in almost everything. I mean, if the surprising, maybe the most surprising thing ever after the first month of the season, the Steelers' offense is actually. <laughs> ranked higher in points for and points uh, in yards for than the Steelers defense is right now, which tells you how bad the Steelers defense has been recently. That's um, so, um, yeah, I, I got to go with Baltimore with the points. Um, 44 point over under. I don't even know about that. I seems that's like tough, been, right? Because like Baltimore like put up 30 the, points. Yeah. It seems like that's been the, uh, Oh, That's right. always it, dude. Pittsburgh is like 42 and a half to 45. Yeah. Um, at home. That doesn't mean anything. I'll say <laughs> I'll say over on the points. I, I don't know why. I'll I'll say over on the points. I like the 44 over. All right, what's your score prediction here? We'll just add to the fire here. Mm. 
I'll say 27, 21 Pittsburgh or Baltimore. Baltimore. That's a close game, actually. 27 21 is a moral victory. You're not feeling good about that, but it's better than, I mean, when you look at everything that's going wrong right now. Actually, let me change that. 27 21. 27 20, and I'm going to change that because I'll say two touchdowns, two field goals. Baltimore has the number one. uh, It's not a great Baltimore defense like we're accustomed to, but it is a really good one. And they're the number one defense um, on third downs and they're number one in the red zone. So I'll say the Steelers maybe have to kick a field goal in the red zone or something like that. So 27-20, I'll say Baltimore. 27-20, Baltimore. I like that. Um, I I don't want to do this. This kind of hurts, like you said. Um, but I'm not thinking it's that close. I'm going to take Baltimore with the points. I am going to go over. I'm going to go Baltimore 31, Pittsburgh 17. Um, don't feel good about it. I hope I'm wrong. But I, I just – that's just – the when you look at it, when you look at everything on paper, it doesn't look good. And I think every time I pick from, like, my heart and my instinct, I'm totally wrong. So we're just going to go paper, and we're going to we're gonna see what happens. I'll tell everybody this, though. There's not a chance I'm betting on this game because this is the Pittsburgh Steelers, and if they won this game, it wouldn't surprise anybody at all. And we'd just be like, yep, well, this is just what happens. And then they'd lose next week to Minnesota, and we'd just take it from there. But hopefully we're wrong. Thank you, everybody, for jumping on to another episode of All Steelers Talk. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube at All Steelers Talk and check us out on Twitter at Nostrack, at Steelers underscore DB, and we will see you next week.